Okay, the New Carlisle right. City Council regular meeting, Monday, June 16th, 2014, 7 p.m. We'll now come to order. We have a call to order, please. And Mayor a roll McLaughlin. call, I guess is what I meant to say. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Ricklauer? Here. Mr. Kraybacher? Here. Mr. Mikelauer? Here. All present. Thank you, sir. Now, have the invocation by Minister Randy Warner from Lake Avenue Christian Church. Father, I ask your uh, blessings and your wisdom and your strength and your unity be on uh, these folks who have willingly said they will be leaders in our community. And I pray, Father, they will have uh, insight that is complete and considers all citizens, that they will be protective, they will be uh, safety oriented, that they will do what makes for the good of our community in, in all areas, uh, financially and in just being a civil organization, Father, I, I'm praying, Lord, that uh, good things happen through these folks. Lord, as they look at these issues, I pray you give them clarity. I pray you give them understanding. Give them a sensitivity to uh, the citizens of this fine community. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Randy. Uh, yes, Pledge of Allegiance. I almost tried to sit down on that one. Please <laughs> flag at the back, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm sorry. It's up to the vice mayor to try and keep you straight, and he almost missed on that. No, it doesn't. I just want to see you mess up for once. Uh, before we go any farther, welcome everyone. Good evening. If you have a cell phone, please, if you turn it down or turn it off, we'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, action on the minutes, regular meeting, June 2nd, 2014. Second. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I think, didn't I abstain with Last week, mm -hmm. did, it, did you? Yes, and it says that I said yay. Yeah, I'll correct. Okay. <clears throat> we like to say yay, though. Yeah, so if you could write all in one time. <laughs> if you'd like to go ahead, Mr. Collier, please. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mayor? Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambo? Yes. Okay, communication. <clears throat> Tonight we have a proclamation honoring Citizens Appreciation Day. And I would just like to say that Councilman Rick Lowry, I believe, was the one that uh, instigated this, and City Manager Kim Jones. And thank you so much for doing that. And I was wondering if Carol and Eddie could come forward as I read this. If you would, please. They'll represent the citizens. We appreciate it. They, they are here just about every meeting, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, go on there. Hello, Mike. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, this is from the Office of the Mayor. It's a proclamation. Whereas since its early beginnings, New Carlisle has been dependent on the good citizens who live, work, and raise their families within its borders to keep the city a vital part of the surrounding area. And whereas, with thanks from no one, these people have gone to work and supported their families, taking care of their homes, and many of them donated time and money to support the many things that they love about New Carlisle. And whereas it would not be the wonderful place it is today if not for the unselfish, hardworking citizens that call New Carlisle home. And whereas it is important that we honor the citizens that have provided great resources and recognize the tremendous contribution they have made to our community. Now, therefore, I, Lowell McLaughlin, Mayor of the City of New Carlisle, on behalf of the City Council and staff, do want to show our appreciation for all the dedicated citizens of this great city do each and every day to help keep New Carlisle the home we love. We wish to honor them and do hereby commend, commend them and proclaim Wednesday, July 2nd, 2010, officially, Citizens Appreciation Day in the City of New Carlisle. Now also, the City of New Carlisle declares 
Wednesday, July 2nd, 2014, Citizens Appreciation Day. It's going to be a pool party. Bring your family and friends and join us for a pool party at the Nukalau Pool, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., July 2nd. And again, admission is free. They have dinner specials and other items available to buy at the concession stand during the party. So why not have your dinner at the pool? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here, I need to give you the original. Oops. You can share it. Someday we should have a new city. Thanks. manager's report. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, in your packet, um, under the action report, I have included a copy of an article that was in the Springfield News and Sun last week uh, regarding the Madison Street School. I think they did a, a good job um, in the article describing kind of how we got to where we are with the school. Um, actually, I think the picture on the front page makes the auditorium look a lot better than it actually does. <laughs> But um, I was really hoping that we would get some more response to the article, and we still might stir somebody's imagination about maybe buying the school. So um, I just I was happy to see that. It must have been a slow news day. It was on the front page, so I thought that was really good. We'll continue on then with the finance discussion with our finance director, Mrs. Harris. Thank you, Mrs. Jones, Mayor, members of council, and the public. The uh, May report summary we'll go over. Um, total revenue collected in May, $338,057.84. Total expenditures for the month of May is $497,483.64. I went ahead and put some of the budget uh, information on this month's report. Our 2014 estimated revenue budget is four million eight hundred and fifty three dollars four hundred four million eight hundred fifty three thousand five hundred fifty eight dollars and forty eight cents and of that we have collected so far today forty three percent of that so we're pretty much on track for the 2014 expense budget it was five million one hundred twenty one thousand seven hundred eighty one dollars and sixty two cents we have collected about 41 percent or spent 41 percent of that we still are looking at a little over three million dollars in expenditures for the end of the year and looking at about two million seven hundred sixty nine thousand of revenue coming in it's a tight <coughs> budget we um, have some debt payments coming up four hundred and seventy six thousand and sixty seven dollars is for the uh, debt payments of which half of it is already allocated we're um, spending for our OWDA loans which is for the Honey Creek interceptor sewer um, some other lines sewer lines and water plant improvements tax income that we've received so far for May is $74,390.34 we are down a little bit from this time last year our year-to-date tax receipts are $525,893.10, and again, that is also down a little bit. I did ask the tax administrator to put a little something in your packet to kind of explain that's two months in a row that we're down, and he was going through and finding that a lot of the business income was lower, and that's a percentage that they pay the income tax. We do still have a, a high amount of unpaid collectibles that we're going to work on aggressively trying to get these collected to get that income back in on the books where it belongs. Right. Is there any questions from council? Hey, council, questions? Sir? Yes. Uh, explain again on the uncollected balance uh, for the delinquent taxes. Looks like it's going up now is that you know i have underlined here not receivable to down over <coughs> Can you try to explain that you know that that was one of the reasons 
I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, but I got most of that. But if I'm not answering your question, please let me know. Um, again, I approached the tax administrator a little bit to help give me some history on why we are down and why uh, the co uncollected balance. I believe that balance has been high and ongoing. There is a lot of uncollectible debt. I don't have those figures, but we should be able, when we are done with our current audit that we're still going through, to check under advisement with the auditors to see what is uncollectible, if it's somebody that has passed on, if it's whatever the circumstances are, get those off the books. And then I believe that the our attorney and uh, Mike, the tax administrator, have been working on some communication to tighten up the collections, to make sure that the people that should be paying or filing, um, we're going to get a little bit more aggressive to make sure that that happens, to make it across the board fair. But those are things that I'm going to have to um, put some time in to get back with you on. Okay, I'm very concerned about that. Since I paid the tax, I anticipated what I should spend. Exactly. <laughs> Anyone else? Any questions? Yes. Uh, on here, it says like we're expected to take in 4.8 million, and then we're going to expend 5.1. Uh, that's like 300 thousand dollars, roughly. Like, what? Like, is that to pay off the debt service, the 467 thousand, or the difference? Or yeah. The total? Uh, well, we're spent. We're going to be spending 300 thousand, roughly more than we're taking in. <laughs> Like what projects will we typically spend that money on? The expenditure budget was approved, I believe, By last fall yeah. and this year. There is still some, un there's beginning balances in those figures that, I don't know how to explain that. Um, money left over from before yes. that is added to it's, the revenues to equal the expenses. Right? Correct. Because we wouldn't be allowed to approve a budget that wasn't balanced. for more expenditures than what the revenue was. Right. So there is balance forward in on the books that aren't showing on. I just pulled those two numbers that were approved. All right. Approved expenditures and what we anticipate our revenue. If that revenue doesn't come in, um, we keep adjusting those expenditures as we go through also All right. to make sure we stay balanced. And we do have a lot of debt. So. And it's not like a major project that is making this. This is just the day-to-day -day operation sure. of the city. Um, it's not any, we don't really have any major projects this year that would be accounting for, you know, we've got the loan payments, like as she shows below the $200,000 loan payment. Um, that's all in part of part of that, five million. Yeah, I was, wondering, I was just double checking, because I was like, oh, I was wondering, like, it's not balanced, but I get what you're saying, so I just want to make sure. Thanks. Yes. I had a question for clarification on that. I was wondering, if, because we don't have a lot of these big capital projects, are you saying that we budget for something like, let's say, $500,000 for pothole repair, just as an example? And if there would be a shortfall, we'd say, OK, we have a shortfall of 250000 so we're going to subtract that from the pothole repair budget. That would be an example of how we would move that around. Right. Or and, and like the capital capital improvement project, the C, CIP that you approved with the major purchases and stuff, it's kind of like a wish list. That's incorporated in here too. And then as we go through the year and our expenses are this and this, that list kind of everything gets bumped to next year and bumped to next year as far as major purchases or anything like that. So it balances in the end of the year. That's, that's yeah. Hey, anyone else? Thank you. Appreciate it. Continuing then uh, with the service discussion, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. I just have a couple updates, um, then I will take some questions. Uh, dirt patching, we're almost 75% done with the city. Uh, we're finishing up the Willowwick area, hopefully this week, and then we will be starting on into the Northwoods uh, region. Wednesday morning, uh, barring any kind of rain coming in early, uh, we're approving myself. We're going to go out and do the main break repairs at Lake and uh, Scott Street, Scott Street and Church Street, and Scott Street and Prentice. We're going to get those taken care of, and then we have a couple main breaks that haven't surfaced. We're going to try and get those dug up that are at Lincoln and Scott and on Zimmerman. Um, 
just to kind of give you an update, we do have, uh, we are falling a little bit behind on the cemetery and a few other areas, especially grass cutting as far as the city properties. And one is it comes down to we've had a couple injuries uh, of employees. Um, some work, some not, but we're working around that. And we're just, we got currently a one full time guy working in the water department and one light duty guy. So we're kind of making do and shifting people around in different departments to make these happen. And myself, you know, coming out of the office to help out a little bit. So that's kind of what we've got going on. Uh, I just did get an employee back from wastewater who was on uh, a workers' comp injury. After six weeks, we got him back. So we're back to their normal staffing. But we're kind of gonna, gonna kind of borrow one of them to help, you know, with some of these other projects. So I can entertain any questions on those or any other topics. That's Mr. Lowry? Yes, sir. Uh, I did read this from front to back. What is your opinion? Yeah, I'm sorry, it's about the uh, speed bumps or speed humps. What is your opinion? Uh, my opinion is, uh, outside of a normal engineer study, is uh, I live out by rumble strips, and you can hear those things from a half mile away. Speed bumps aren't as loud, but they are loud. And my thing would be the way our city set up in the main, our, our main arterials is I would not like to see them installed. I would like to see enforcement to help take care of that. And as one as we'd be chasing, my biggest bullet point was chasing the problem around throughout the city. So if we did install a couple of these uh, speed tables or speed humps at Scott Street, well, where we have a problem now, we are going to move that problem to Kennison or move that problem to Funston. So then we'll add a couple more there. So I, I just feel like we're chasing the problem uh, around currently. That's how I feel with those. Okay. I, I won't disagree with you, but if you talk enforcement, so if we put two police officers on that street, then we're moving the problem around still because they're going to go to another street. As we were told by Deputy Fader at the crime watch meeting, they have radios. They know where the police are at. And he said, if you stop them on Madison, you're going to get them on Clay. If you stop them on Clay, they're going to Madison and they're going to all over the city. So what does the city do to correct this problem? I need to answer. I know the one thing is once you put a speed bump down, it's there permanently. Okay. Just comparing that to um, like a sheriff's deputy, they can move around. So that's the two different things. Is once permanent, you move them permanently someplace else. Where a deputy, like you said, they would. I mean, once you crack down on one street, they're going to move to the next street. But then you can move with it. Where um, the the speed bumps, it just depends on how many you know, we want to want to put in and where where we can. Uh, uh, keep the cost down also with the other things we have going on. Maybe when it's Sergeant Underwood's turn, we can speak to him and get his thoughts on this, okay? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Zamba. Uh, regard, I read it also, Rick. Regarding the, the speed bumps or the speed tables, did anybody in our administration contact the city of Dayton, which is loaded with yeah, speed bumps? Loaded as to the effectiveness of where they have put them, because they've got years of experience with them now, and what their actual cost was. I mean, I, I saw here $2,000 plus as of uh, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that in itself is a matter for serious consideration. If you got to put 10 of them out, that's 20 grand. That's now a chunk of change. But Dayton should have, you, you should be able to get a hold of either there service director or city manager and see what their experience has been. And if, if you haven't done it, it might not be a bad idea. Yeah, some of their experiences, um, I have a whole manual that if you guys go to the website I put on there, uh, Dayton is listed as one of the cities that have been contacted. Now, this isn't uh, up to date within the last five or so years, but the information is the, is the same. Um, I looked at uh, different areas, uh, different cities, and they are one of the ones in there that has their input in that manual. Okay. Uh, for instance, the liability. Um, the liability is not as uh, severe when you follow like an engineer study to get them installed. So um, but there's, there's a lot of uh, cases being brought against the city as in sued cases, but there's not many payouts as I had documented there. They're, they're not reaching any kind of a uh, settlement. So. Mr. McIntyre, 
Uh, I have a few things, so I'll be quick. But to add on the, on the speed bump um, situation, I've, I've seen them in place in, uh, in Richmond, in Indiana, Danville, Illinois, and also Oxford. Not the real Oxford in England, the fake one out <laughs> where Miami is. Uh, not the real Miami, the fake Miami. <laughs> but anyway, the, the issue. Actually, the others are the imposters. What, what I've seen is, yeah, it, it, it does a great job of reducing people speeding through. You do have to slow down. The problem with that is is that when we have bad winters and things break apart or you'll have a situation where people say, I don't want to drive over it, so now I'm going to try to swerve around it, and then you end up in somebody's yard or whatever it is. And so any situation we have is not going to be perfect. And like you said, going and talking to Dayton, um, maybe having a work session sometime in the future to look at this and find a solution we can all be happy with. If we have them here, it'll, it'll move the speeders to another street. The police can patrol that street. But there's also the wear and tear issue. There's a lot of different variables in play here. That's my thought for the speed bumps. Um, I want to thank you for mentioning the grass cutting situation because I know that's been, that's been brought up a lot. That was a big issue on social media this past week regarding New Carlisle's people were concerned that some houses were not maintaining their yards, and so I'm glad that you mentioned that, that we're short-staffed right now, but it's something that we're focusing on. The last issue I have, and this came up during our safety meeting, is that on North Church Street, um, near 516 North Church, there is a manhole uh, cover that's particularly low into the ground, and, and I went and drove past it, and it seems that if you're hitting that at a high rate of speed, and maybe the speed bumps would help in this, but you could damage your car or, or make the, the cover come out, and which the next driver then couldn't see. So uh, some of the residents were wondering if a, a riser could be possible or, or some sort of solution could be found with that um, at all. And so I just want to bring that to your attention. I probably could have let you know earlier, but. Um, you said 516? Uh, uh, yeah, about right in that area, just just on the other side of, uh, of Lake. Like you're heading towards Champaign County in, in that area. And that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? I have one more. This one. Uh, how do these construction sites, I think I've seen this, maybe not recently, but don't they have portable speed bumps? The real heavy yellow things they put out on their sites? Yeah. What type of sites? Like construction sites, road construction, don't they have portable speed bumps? I just wondering if those are an option. I know I've seen them somewhere, I can't recall exactly where, but I have seen them. They're like polymer, rubber, real heavy. They have an inch yeah. rubber They had them north when they were widening 235. Okay, I know I've seen them somewhere. I can't oh, the ones they kept that's dragging, a, that's where they were? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the problem, there was a major liability issue with them because that was a speed of uh, 50, even though they dropped it to, well, it was technically 45. Um, those bumps are not to be used, but to under under 25 mile an hour speed limit. Um, so yeah, I mean, if someone would have damaged their car on those, there could have been a liability issue. Okay. But I'm not sure if in those documents I supplied or that website I supplied that it is less than 25 mile an hour where these uh, speed tables, speed humps, speed bumps are recommended. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, I drive a lot in Dayton, so I, I drive over the you know the tables and. Um, I have a problem with my little car, you, know, you jump over those little things, you know, it's, it's, but I like those a lot better than, than the speed bumps, you know, because my little car has a hard time jumping over those, but if you ever think, you know, I, I like the table a lot better. Um, my, my next question is um, the North Support Corporate Church of Crockley to the cemetery, is that in your department? The what, I'm sorry? Is it not as a four for sure? I was going to talk about that. You know, you talk about that? Yeah, I have it okay. farther down on the management report. Okay. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay. All right, then. Thank you, Mr. Keiko. Continuing with the planning and zoning, planning director, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, City Manager Jones. Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public, I'd like to share with you the May 2014 activity report for the planning department. We had nine complaints come through the office. That brings our year-to-date total to 23. I issued 19 yellow tags slash verbal warnings that bring our year-to-date total up to 72. Uh, I issued six nuisance violations. Uh, just for clarification, nuisance violations would be classified as any violation other than grass this time of year. So we issued six of those in, uh, during the month of May. It brings our total up to uh, 12. I issued uh, 50 grass violations for the month of May, brings a year-to-date total up to 51. 
We had four property abatements. Uh, year to date, total on property abatements is four. Had 12 zoning permit applications come through the office in May. Uh, brings our total up to 30 for the year. Compliance rates, yellow tags violation, 68%. Uh, year to date total, I mean our year to date compliance rate for yellow tags violation is now at 83%. Nuisance violations to abatements is 100%. None of the uh, nuisance violations have required our city staff to abate any of the property. Uh, brings our year-to-date total also up to 100%. Grass violations to abatements, uh, abatements 92%, and that's the same compliance rate for year-to-date total on that as well. Some current work I'm working on. Code enforcement is in full effect this time of year. Uh, just for a reminder for those in the audience and those that will be watching on TV or the internet, Yellow tags, if you do see one of those on your door, uh, taped to your door, that is a five-day warning period to correct the issue. If it's not corrected in that five-day period, you'll get a violation notice. Those give you 10 days to correct the violations. Anything not corrected after the 10th day can be eligible for abatement. Um, grass and weed violations, there is no warning period. That's a straight, goes straight to violation and you have five days to correct the problem. Uh, no grass clippings in the street, please, but that seems to be a recurring problem. Grass clippings get washed away by the rain and then they clog up the sewers. Uh, homeowner is responsible to maintain grassy areas located along alleyways if you're in the back there. And then minimum clearance is eight foot for branching ha branches hanging over the sidewalks. I do have a list of a few properties on Galewood and Rawson. Uh, I'm going to be doing um, some more inventory in Northwoods to find out some more uh, clearance issues with the branches. I'm going to hit everybody at once, similar to the sidewalk uh, program. Community yard sale, interest is coming in. Um, we will run an ad in the New Carlisle News for residential pro uh, participation later this month. Tentative uh, date on that is July 19th. And also today, um, we will be running on the water bills uh, notification of the community yard sale as well for people to call in and register. I think this is going to be a great event. Hopefully it sticks year in, year out. Um, right now, I think we have maybe eight or nine calls, and that's just off of the newsletter that Ms. Jones had sent out. So there is some interest there. Community walk day. Planning efforts will begin July 7, 2014. The day of the walk will be September 2nd, uh, 2014. I'll have more de details coming in the coming weeks. New Carlisle is open for business. Uh, members of council, you should have came across a handout that I gave regarding um, commercial property. I'd like to discuss that with you right now. The first property I'm going to feature is um, it's, it's owned by Surefire Investments and is located at 2104 Addison New Carlisle Road. It has 50.87 legal acres of farmland. It is zoned agriculture and I would like to just go briefly go over the permitted uses uh, for those of in the audience and on uh, the TV. Uh, agricultural uses, buildings or structures. You can have nurseries on an agricultural lot. You can also have greenhouses. You can perform farming, dairying, pasturage, horticulture, floriculture, bd culture, animal poultry and hus husbandry, single families home, but you do need a lot split for that. Uh, churches and other places of worship, schools and institutions for academic instruction. Um, public parks and recreational sites and roadside stands for agricultural products. Those are permitted uses. You do not need any uh, uh, conditional uses or planning board or city council uh, approval for those. The uh, uses that you do need conditional use approval for would be farm vacation enterprises, private non-commercial recreational facilities and utilities, uh, and home occupations. If you have any more questions or concerns regarding this property that I did showcase today, please give me a call at the office at 845-9492. Uh, Farmer's Market opening weekend is next weekend, uh, June 21st. A lot of interest going around this year. We want to make it bigger and better than it was last year. Just in case you're driving north and south along 275, uh, 235 by Waterdog, you will see that uh, banner has been hung. It says uh, Farmer's Market has the dates. Um, so it's it's a pretty big sign. I don't, I don't think you can miss it at all if you are driving that route. Um, sidewalk program. Uh, last week and the week before, I have went up uh, to, to Northwood subdivision and have physically spray painted all the sidewalks that need to be repaired uh, and replaced. Letters will be sent out soon. We have it in our legal department for review for the letter to make sure it's okay before we do mail that out. Um, Ms. Jones and I, uh, well, Ms. Jones has decided to waive the sidewalk fee 
until September 1st. So if you want to get uh, those panels replaced, uh, you do need to permit for that. However, there will be no fee on the city end for the inspection. Uh, like I said, those will be waived until September 1st. Any address wanting to do after September 1st will be a case-by-case -case scenario. As it stands now, we have approximately 84 addresses, and that totals up to approximately 200 panels that will be replaced in Northwoods. Uh, Planning Board has a meeting scheduled for this Thursday, June 19, 3.30 p.m. at the fire station. We will be discussing, a, discussing and voting on a lot split for Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Um, and also, the Board of Zoning Appeals will have a meeting later that evening also at the firehouse at 5.30. And they will be discussing and voting on a mural that was requested to be painted on the side of the waterbed store. Vacant housing for the month is 77, so that puts us at our normal what we are month to month. I do believe that is all I have for you, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I have one question. Last meeting, you was not present, and I have been to a um, crime watch meeting. A gentleman spoke to me that uses a wheelchair complaining about the names of the sidewalk. Since then, we've had another crime watch meeting, and he spoke to me, and he said, some of them have been taken care of, and some have not. I am guessing, and I told you, and I hope I'm right, that they probably fall under the same thing as the grants. Due process. <laughs> yeah, it'll be the same process as anything else, but it is, I am, I have a list of the addresses, and my next project is to do a big group of them together. Okay, I just want to make sure I thought yeah. that's one of those things you made me up, Sure. Yeah, anyone else? Mr. Bridges, uh, you said 84 different addresses need work on the sidewalk, is that yes. correct? We have a list of people that could possibly be contacted to maybe group these together, say eight or ten at a time, something like that. Do we not have some people that, I believe well, some they, of the workers have gotten some, of the, when they some get, cards from different people? Sure, sure. Well, when you send a letter out, one of the things is that the key to keeping your cost down is the buying bulk. So if you do notice neighbors that have markings on the sidewalk panel, try to go in with them as well. Um, what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. Well, that's what I was asking. Do okay. we have people on record that they can contact that could maybe group, as you just said, eight to ten together to yeah. keep the cost down for people? We're definitely not going to publish every public publicly publish everybody's addresses who has been listed. Um, what I'm recommend them doing is call me. I can pair them up with people right. or um, give each other, you know, um, hey, call this person or get a hold of this address. They might have some, um, you know, <clears throat> stuff they can go in with you on as well. So, and we do have a list of a single contractor as, as of now to actually do the repairs if they don't choose their own. Uh, we're just gotta be cautious with how we um, market that one contractor without seeming like we're giving them preference. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bridges. Anyone else? Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Bridges. All right, then we're continuing with the fire discussion with Chief Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, citizens, and guests. Uh, the Nuclear Oil Fire Division responded to a combined total of 102 calls for service during the month of May 2014. Fire responses totaled 18 with an average response time of 7 minutes 52 seconds. The division responded to 84 medical calls for service with an average response time of 5 minutes 20 seconds. Some Elizabeth Township information. Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 17 calls for service during the month of May. Fire responses totaled four. Medical responses totaled 13. There were 14 responses made into Elizabeth Township, one to the village of Castown, one response to the city of New Carlisle, and one into the city of Troy. Some significant events from last month. Uh, we did have a small fire at 107 North Pike Street, Bell Manor. Uh, there was a fire in an outlet that was confined to the outlet. There was no injuries or no evacuation really needed in that situation. Uh, the situation was brought under control by staff, actually, uh, with no problems. Uh, uh, we touched on the 600 West Madison fire last meeting. Uh, there was an arson fire on the roof of the building and several small fires set inside. Uh, the fire is still under investigation. If you have any information regarding the fire, either call the firehouse or call the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we did have a fully involved structure fire at 72 Children's Home Road in Elizabeth Township. The, uh, it was a total loss, but uh, the home was vacant and had been vacant for approximately a year. Uh, 
uh, and that's a significant loss of that property. But uh, I spoke with the township trustees afterwards, and uh, they already have some interest in uh, someone who wants the actual vacant lot. So it turned out to be all right. Uh, during our uh, storm we had last month, we did have a water rescue right out in front of the firehouse. Uh, a young lady drove into some high water that's normally there out in front of the firehouse. Unfortunately, Miami County had run out of high water signs, so there wasn't any signage out in front of the firehouse. But uh, the, the firefighters in the firehouse actually heard the lady hollering for help and went out and, and rescued her off the top of her car. So that situation turned out okay. Uh, that's all the information I have. I'll entertain any questions. Council, any questions? Council, this side. Uh, same question I ask equipment wise. We're doing all right? Doing well. Everything's up and running. Thank you. Thanks for your report. Uh, we'll go to our police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mayor, Council, and outstanding citizens of New Law. For the month of May, Reports by New Corral deputies, there were 30. Reports by a county deputy, we had 16. That was a total for the city of 46. They patrolled 2,455 miles, had 136 miscellaneous calls, and there were four follow-up investigations. Under traffic information, traffic stops 55, citations issued, we had 45. OVI arrests, there were six, there were eight charges, and those six arrested. Driving under suspension 10, parking citations 11, and non-injury accidents, we had six. Under criminal information, we had criminal adult arrests, there were six. Adult charges, there were six. Criminal juvenile arrests, we had three, and there were three charges with that. In all that, we had four warrant arrests, and we did not file any warrants this month in, by the New Wild deputies. Under special interest, we had one assault, two breaking and entering, 11 thefts, two vandalisms, 14 911 hang-ups, one phone harassment. Domestic violence with an assault, there was one. Domestic violence that was verbal, there were four. We had one lockout, one peace officer call, eight alarms, and 77 assists. I have a message from the sheriff. It says our stats for the period of January 1st, 2013 to May 31st, 2013, as compared to the same period of 2014, January 1, to May 13th, 2014, are complete. Our calls for service are up 46%. Well, here's the good news. Our criminal reports are down 12%, and the sheriff wants to thank the members of the sheriff's office for doing an outstanding job, and also wants to report that the crime in the city of New Carlisle is down 44.7%. And that's amazing. In Bethel Township, the reports are down also by 11.7%. And even in our biggest township, and that's Springfield Township, criminal reports are down 6%. So although we see an increase in service, reports are down, and that's just great news for this time of year. Then on June 3rd, 2014, Deputy Tim Leedy received notifications from Wright State University that he had been selected to receive their Outstanding Crime and Justice Study Alumnus Award. The award ceremony is September 12th at 5 p.m. at Wright State University in the Berry Room. And I want to make sure we give Deputy Leedy congratulations for another prestigious award for one of our New Corral deputies. And he was chosen uh, with the alumni, uh, there's approximately 500 of them, and, and that's outstanding. Tim, and Tim does a great job for us up here. You'll notice on the back of the report, I have attached, it's the township monthly report that shows those statistics the sheriff's talking about. And I've also added uh, the services provided by the Clark County Sheriff's Office at no additional charge. Those are also attached on the back. And with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you. Council? Yes, Mr. Larry. Sorry, Norman, I have a question. It has absolutely nothing to do with your report. Okay? That's Once again, okay. entered the crime watch mm -hmm. uh, The subject, and I brought it up, was neighborhood watch. Is there a way we can get a deputy to come and instruct, talk about neighborhood watch? started in the city of New Carlisle. Years ago, Eric um, 
was Eric's last name? You know what I'm talking about? Holmes. Holmes. So was going to start one, and then he got um, called to either Afghanistan or that type of thing, which one he was in the garden. And uh, I don't think it's ever been picked up ever since. And I think that would be something that would work very well in Utah. Uh, you can call me, stop by, and I'll stop by, and I can talk about it, and see if we can get something like that started in Utah. Do you think it would be a good idea? Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, the more crime watches we have, the more people we're watching out for each other and reporting crime. That's why our statistics are down. People are now reporting crime to us. Um, you can't take a back seat any longer. If you see something happening, if you witness a crime, see something illegal going on, it is your duty as a citizen of New Carlisle to report that so we can stop it. Thinking about it or talking to a deputy two days later does really does not do us any good. I will be in touch with you in turn that. Is that sure. right? Absolutely. And, and I will do what I can to get a, a brand new crime watch started up here. Neighborhood watch. Neighborhood watch. It's, it's the same sir. thing. It's the same thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, I did not know that. They're, they're actually called neighborhood crime watches. Okay. So. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Else? Sergeant, uh, I live on Church Street and Main Street, and coming off of 235, we still have horrific speeding coming off of 235 and sometimes going south also on Church Street. I know you'd had a deputy. I've seen him a couple times in the past, but I'm afraid somebody's going to get hurt. We have some young kids running up and down that street, and I would hate to see that. I don't know whether they're trying to make that light on uh, Jefferson Street, but there's some heavy speeding coming up through there now. Thank well, you. not only have we uh, written citations in that area, just by what you see in the day shift, we also have our night shift patrols at, and we've had a couple of our OVI arrests in that area. So we are patrolling, um, but you're roughly looking at about a thousand cars in a 24-hour period coming through there. And we, we patrol the city in the, in the spots that are needed, and, but we also patrol the city throughout the night. Um, we do set occasionally and, and run radar. I will make sure that, that I pass that on to the guys up here, and uh, that should reflect uh, on what you're saying, and, and we will Try to slow them down more. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, it just yes. so happened I spoke with one of the deputies in the first five days. It's buried in the stacks, but I think you wrote nine citations in the first five days sitting where you normally see them sitting by the light. I can believe it. Yep. Yep. It's pretty heavy through you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry. Mr. McIntyre. Maybe. Sir, a question about the Madison Street School. Um, how's, how are things going with uh, the investigation into the arson? I know since we or just in general issues with the school. I know since we found out that it had been set on fire last month, um, I went down to survey the damage and there had been a sign that said, you know, arson investigation, do not enter, don't trespass. That had been ripped down, another window had been knocked out. I went back this past weekend and it had been boarded up again. So it's, it seems like it's this cat and mouse game back and forth trying to get them in. Any, any new leads or is that just sort of the nature of it with this sort of thing? Not to my knowledge, uh, usually when there's an investigation of that type, uh, we don't have a huge meeting. The command staff at the sheriff's office uh, is taking care of that part of it, um, but it hasn't been passed on to me as, as where the investigation stands. I guess I could ask, to be quite honest with you. As far as those signs being down, I'm not real sure they've been reported to us that they've been vandalized. So that's my, I should have contacted you. I should do exactly what you're saying and let Correct. you know when I see something. So. You, the minute you see something like that, you should let us know and maybe we can find the, the, who the person is. We, we can set across the street at, at night. It's obviously happening in the late hours, I would think, but um, you know, that's, we'd love to catch those guys. I'd like to solve that crime too. Anyone else? Yes. I got one, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to backpedal a couple of people here. I meant to ask you a question, uh, Mr. Kitko. Just an update on the uh, new meters and where we're at on that. Um, I have the agreement here for legal to sign. I will then email it off in the morning. And they said 
said I should have the agreement back in a week and we can order. Uh, I did get a response back on the $40,000 we received as a grant from the Ohio uh, Bureau of Workers' Compensation Safety Intervention Program. I did get the official award letter. They said it would be about, uh, up to five weeks till we get our check deposited in our account. Uh, I asked and wrote to them for an exception or a waiver to get, be able to start the project immediately. So I'm just waiting to hear back on that. Great. Thank you. Well, Anyone else? Anyone on the staff? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, continuing with informational items, in your packet was a copy of an email uh, from the sheriff, and he has already um, established a date for trick or treat. I know it seems kind of early, but people plan early, so um, normally in the past we have kind of joined with the rest of the county so that we're all consistent, but that's entirely up to council. Um, if you do decide to agree with this date, we would need a motion to, to set that. Um, the date that he is suggesting or the date that he has established for Clark County is Saturday, October 20, uh, 25th from 6 to 8 p.m. Mr. Kermay. Mr. Zambok. I move that the city of New Carlisle join the balance of Clark County and adopt Saturday, October 25th from 6 to 8 p.m. as beggar's night. Second. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybar? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. I'm going to skip number two, the sidewalk fees, because that's already been talked about earlier in the meeting, unless anybody had questions about that. Um, the next thing in your packet was a letter from Impact Bethel talking about their kids' summer lunch program, which they are going to do again. Uh, actually, I think they've already started. Um, I just got this letter. So they are asking for people to donate either time, money, or food items for that um, very worthy very worthy program. Last year, um, they had served over 4,500 lunches in 48 days. So the need is very, very right now um, a lot of kids get the lunches at school and when they're not in school sometimes they don't eat so please keep that in mind if anybody has any questions I'd be glad to call me and I'll be glad to get you the, the information mrs. Jones would you just share with the uh, how much it would cost if somebody would want to donate like for a dollar and a half mm -hmm. and 75 uh -huh. a year? Um, for a dollar fifty you can feed one child for one day for $75, you can feed one child for the entire summer. So no, no amounts too small, and, no, and uh, all donations are appreciated. Another thing, too, is they like to get gift cards for, like, Domino's or Lee's chicken, because then they'll use those cards to go purchase the food for the program for the kids for that day. So there's also Walmart, Kroger's, Sam's Club cards. Um, continuing then with your packet, was a flyer regarding the library summer readers program. This year, uh, the city of uh, New Carlisle is going to donate a one day pool pass um, to each child, one limit, one pass per child um, for anybody that completes the library readers program for the summer. So it's a little incentive to get the kids uh, to read and come swim and enjoy the sunshine. And then lastly in your packets is a uh, copy of an ad that should be in the New Carlisle News this week and next. And that is regarding um, delinquent cemetery lot payments. Um, Victoria's been doing a really a lot of work going through trying to figure out laws have changed with the cemetery. It used to be back in the 70s and the 80s. If you bought a lot, you put $25 down and then when you needed it 30 years later, then you paid for it. Well, our ordinances have changed since then, and some of these people, they have $900 on the books that they owe, and they either died and been buried someplace else, or we have no forwarding addresses for them. We have sent them certified letters. Um, we've called, we all kinds of things. And this list of eight people, um, we've listed their last known address, but these, could have been 30 years ago. So um, this is almost $4,000 worth of lots. That was their original worth. 
the rates have really gone up since then. So what we're going to do is, if nobody comes forward after this has been put in the paper, um, as of July 1st, then they would have considered forfeited the property. Um, and then we can turn around and resell the lots. So um, we have definitely got the cemetery records cleaned up a lot as far as not letting stuff ride, accounts being brought up to date. We have since changed the laws so that people have to start paying like within 60 days and have it paid off within a year. We're not dragging it out. And then we also, we went through the list. If somebody already had a spouse buried there, we didn't touch those people. Um, if they already had a headstone there, um, one lady still owes $100, but she's afraid as soon as she pays it off that she will die. So we're not going to bother her. So, you know, we have given this a lot of consideration. We're not trying to be hard-nosed about it. This is most, this is people who basically don't want these lots or forgot they even had them. They bought them so many years ago. So that's the purpose of that. Um, and that's the end of my report. If you have any questions. Mr. Lowry first. Okay. Mr. Craig, uh, we had a meeting with a citizen oh. here mm -hmm. uh, last week mm -hmm. uh, of a concern of our group at the park. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on that a little sure. bit? Sure. Uh, Mr. Kitko and I met with a citizen who uh, lives off of Zimmerman and they back onto Brubaker Park. And they have had some concern with a large group of young men, some really, really young, some actually wouldn't call them young men anymore, but they're playing soccer back there. And what the concern was is that the other people can't use the park because the group can be 40 to 50 people sometimes. They usually don't even start till like seven or eight o'clock at night and they go late in the evening and sometimes they're using profanity. So we were sat and trying to brainstorm to think of another way what we could do to, you know, it's a public park, so they're allowed to use the park too. So there's a fine line as far as saying you can use it, but you can't. So we were trying to find another way of doing this. Um, it did turn out that the majority of those people were Hispanic. So we sat down with one of another member of the community who is Hispanic and talked with her and asked if she would be willing to be a go-between because we weren't trying to stop them from playing. We were trying to relocate them to another better location for them to play. And so um, we looked at Madison Street School, we looked at the Westlake property, and we settled on trying to move them out here to the Smith Park, the open field where it used to be a diamond back there. Um, she was very receptive. She actually brought her husband along and the two of them are pretty respected in their own community. And um, we're going to sit down and talk to the young men and encourage them to relocate their activities. And so far, we haven't heard any more complaints, so it's not been quite a week, but we're hopeful that that will make everybody happy. Is there a possibility, and I know it costs money, of putting post, uh, goal post out there? Mr. Kitko is checking into trying to find some used nets. We told him that we were gonna try to do that, not something that's gonna be expensive to the mm -hmm. city, but something so that they, which is more than what they've got right now. Right now they're painting trees and using them yeah. as their goals, so. We're thinking that's graffiti and we're right. on the trees, but really they're making the goals. And right, it's their goal, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Mr. McIntyre. I had a question on the um, this mm -hmm. property issue with the cemetery, and it's on contract law, so get ready, Mr. Pedraza. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> if, if somebody were to buy in 1978, pay $25 down, sign what I assume was some sort of contract that they'd have this lot and then the law changes, would there be some sort of way they're grandfathered in and then this wouldn't be valid for them, the, the change in the law because they'd signed a contract beforehand or how's that work? If they put any money down, we would intend to give them back any money if they ever come forward. But these are people that I, I really doubt will come forward because I know for one, at least two of them are, have already passed away and are buried someplace else. Um, so I don't think they'll be answering this ad. Oh, sure. But, um, that, that would be our intent. Okay, so that's taking, that's been looked at, that issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Lyon. Please, thank you, sir. A couple of things on this list. Uh, as take care of records for the American Legion, I do know one of them has passed away. Mm -hmm. I do have a current address if you want it, of his family. Mm -hmm. I know he does have family members alive. Okay. And I can get you that Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Second thing, that's street property. A couple questions. Mm -hmm. 
Is it to the city a liability? Yes. To how much? Um, Ballpark figure. Good one. A couple thousand a year probably would be the liability insurance and the cost to mow the grass. That's okay. the only expenses involved in it. I, I thought you meant the liability of somebody getting hurt. No, I meant monetary. So uh, every year it is a liability and we're paying money for it. And over the last, let's say, five years, have we made a profit of any kind off that property? Have we made one nickel or has it constantly been a liability to us? Constantly been a liability. Okay, I'm going to bring up something I know. Did I make catch something over this? But I always said that was on my mind. I don't say this one. It may go on social media, all twisted around and turn. That's okay. I can go with it. You have an advertisement now for someone to buy except an offer, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll entertain any thoughts from anybody in the audience if you allow. Uh, probably somebody, a lot of people thinking fifty, sixty thousand dollars. I don't know. I would like to talk to city council, all members, and put a new ad out and say, if you would make the perimeters that you take care of, you either raise it and remove it, or you bring it up to code and use it, you can have it for free. It's costing us money every year. We've never made a nickel off of it. Let's do away with the problem. If you put it for free, in my opinion, you're going to get a lot of people coming ask that. Many of them may say, no, I don't have the money to tear it down. No, I can't bring it on the code. But there may be that one person for free. I'll look into that. That's my thoughts. Council, it's... I think you have part. to have one dollar for consideration. Exactly. You know, right, but yeah. it, it's essentially exactly. A dollar or five dollars, but, you know, so That's my thoughts, and, you know, it can be turned around any way it wants to. But, you know, it is a liability in the city. It has been a liability. There were mistakes made back years ago. Uh, we cannot correct those mistakes at this time. This time, what we do, everything we can to get rid of the building, get out the number and see what happens. We've rededicated everything there. Certain things can be done and can't be done. It's not going to hurt anybody who lives back there. It's going to be better for them. It will be bigger houses on bigger lots than what's there now if someone decides to go. So, Council, I'm just throwing this out to you guys and you can think about it or whatever. Okay? If you want to call me a dummy, that's fine. You can do that too. Anyone else? <clears throat> if I remember sure. correctly, two years ago when I first got in council, it was uh, five thousand two hundred something dollars a year for insurance. Is what we're paying a year, just for liability. So. I think at that time we still had electric that we had to pay. Okay. And they've removed all the electric, and um, probably within the last year. All right. So it's so. probably gone down. And Kim, you spoke about the other liability. I didn't clarify. You know, if somebody gets in there and gets hurt. I don't know. Could be a very big line. I don't know, but I would like to see council talk about it. I, maybe not necessarily in one session. I don't know, whatever it takes. Let's just really think about You know, it's been talked about for 10 or 11 years. Let's do it. If somebody wants them, let them have it. As long as they do the way we would like to have it done. Anyone else? I'm going to thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mrs. Jones? No, I'm finished. Finished? Okay, we are now at comments from the members of the public. Do we have anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the evening? Anyone at all? Forever hold your peace. Going, going, going. All right. Uh, any committee reports tonight? Not tonight. All right. Resolutions we have not. Ordinances. Mr. Collier, if you would, if you go ahead and read, please. Ordinance 14-32, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action on 7714, an ordinance amending Chapter 238 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the Division of Fire. Ordinance 1433, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action on 7714, an ordinance authorizing the disposal of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit city property. If you would, read the rest, if you would, please. City offices will be closed on Friday, July 4, 2014. There will be a joint government meeting Monday, June the 30th at 6.30 p.m. at Tecumseh High School. Citizen Appreciation Day will be Wednesday, July 2nd, 2014 
The city pool will be open from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and that will be free, correct? Yes. The New Carlisle Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, July 9th, 2014 at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Thank you, sir. Other business? Do we have some other business this evening? So I'd like to say something. I just have a quick question <laughs> yes. for Ms. Jones. On the Citizens Appreciation Day at the at the pool, I noticed it said something about how dinner. Are they going to have other types of food other than the traditional? Oh, they were going to have they were going to have a, um, some specials like pop pizza, lower reduced rates for okay. like you know like family purchases and things like that just for the night. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right, and I do encourage council to be there to make sure that we let people know we appreciate them. No speed. <laughs> Wednesday night, and uh, Mr. Zambach and I have a previous engagement where we have to torch us and white walls again. Oh, that is a Wednesday. Wednesday night. Yeah. <laughs> the ones you put in the trees. The one we go in the water in the trees. Don't never find them again. You had, a, you had another comment? You know, uh, I anyone know else have any comments? Or this is? Okay, uh, I, I have a comment. Yes. No speed of shorts, uh, swim shorts allowed. <laughs> well, they do have to have shorts on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I do mean that, but no speed of speech. Anyone out in the audience? Anyone would like to say anything at this point? Other business? Staff, anyone at all? Uh, executive session, there's none tonight, and I would entertain a uh, suggestion for the mayor. Yes. I move we adjourn. We are adjourned.